If you're planning on buying any cards from TCG Player, make sure you use our affiliate link right here in the description of our video to help support the channel. It's the best way to do it. Are you looking for Rebel Clash codes? They are already available on Poton Store, as you can see, and you can use Tableman code for 5% off or for any purchase of all the other code cards they have. For the European players, Millipods Gaming has everything you need from collectibles to all the new Pokemon Sword and Shield cards and Rebel Clashes now in stock. Make sure you use Tableman code for 5% off your final purchase. another day of Road to Players Cup. I have been playing um, a few extra tournaments here and there and um, so far I've played five tournaments, gotten two first places, one of them you watched, and then a top four, which since I lost to the winner I believe means I was third place, and then two more tournaments where I lost in the first round. But since I lost to the eventual winner, I believe that credits me with 5th uh, place, which equates to 4 points. Yeah? I'm pretty sure um, that the points do go 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, depending on your position. If you lose to the eventual winner in the first round, you're guaranteed 5th place. If you lose to the second place, you're guaranteed 6th place. If you lose to the third place, you're guaranteed 7th. And if you lose to 4th place, you are 8th place. So, I believe I've, um, I've added... 30 points to my tally, right? Two first places, that's 16. Um, two fifth places, that's eight, so 24. And then one third place, which is six, which is 30. So 30 out of 40 possible points, that's a pretty good amount, I'd say. Um, now we're gonna be using the combo station deck that ended up winning the Limitless Tournament. So hopefully it goes well for us and it doesn't take too much time. You can see these tournaments actually fill up quite fast. Yeah, and I'm sure eventually in these uh, tournaments we'll run into familiar faces. We're up against Tingle with uh, possibly a mirror match, possibly Pigram. Not exactly sure. He did have Dark type in his um, in the previous screen. Um, which could signify Absol. Now, Stingo, I believe, is Lucas Stingo, who is a player from Brazil. So this is technically a direct competitor for me in the... Um, oh, this might this is probably Spirit Tomb Beast, I imagine. Um, but yeah, he's a direct competitor in um, this tournament. So that's really cool, right? That's really cool. Now, the Quick World Top Deck, pretty fortunate. Do have Mime, we do have Trachi, so we should be able to get... The combo going, uh, we did price two medals and a station and a couple of Drachis. I believe this place four, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but yeah, should be pretty okay so far. Still wish I will go ahead and grab the scoop up net, no, the tool scrapper, um, making my opponent possibly hold on to um, okay we took out the energy making him hold on to his um, uh, the thing that increases the damage if your if your Pokemon has 30 HP or less yeah, that's that's what I'm hoping for okay so we get the Mr. Mime which will probably discourage me from playing Professor's Research next turn um, he does end up top decking the Drachi, right, and immediately Stella wishing with it. Like I said, I'm not sure what we are up against. We are going to get Marnied, which is fine. I probably should have played the Metal Goggles. That's actually a big oversight on my part. Big oversight on my part. And it's actually Dragapults, okay. We are actually up against Dragapults. So this will probably be for Tetene, I imagine. Hmm. Never mind. Just checking his deck. We are going to get Marnied. That's perfectly fine. 
That is perfectly, perfectly fine. And all right, I appreciate the Sonia, right? I definitely appreciate the Sonia. Don't mind the Hammerheads too, too much. I wasn't attacking anyways next turn, so that's a okay. And so there's two things. The Sonia could give me either energy to make sure I attach to a station, or it could give me the combo pieces. Uh, we know the Mr. Mime is at the bottom of the deck, right? We do know Mr. Mime is at the bottom of the deck. I don't have to pull up the combo right, right? Next turn, the metal, not attaching the metal, the metal goggles is a big uh, rip on my part though. That's a very big rip on my part. Okay, we do get that. So I'm gonna still wish first. And I do find the research. So I'm thinking I'd really like rather get the station fully powered up right now. So I'm just gonna grab two metals. Yeah, I grab two metals. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna metal saucer one energy. I'm gonna go ahead and attach the energy. I'm gonna prime it wisdom the other one, right? Find myself a boss's orders, and then Do I mind losing the Jirachi? I guess I don't. I mean, I'm not happy about it, but there's not much I can do about it. I do find another Orangaroo, which is pretty okay. Um, we know one card in my opponent's hand is an Energy Spinner. He does need a VMAX and a Switching card in order to start powering through, right? The cool thing is we don't need to do the combo next turn. We can um, hit and then pull off the combo. But we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. And very nice. Okay, perfect hand for Stingle. <clears throat> very, very nice hand for my opponent. So far, do see the treasure. We are going to see... Oh, did he already establish, actually? Did he establish for something that I missed? Uh, no, he didn't. Okay, so we see another hammer, another head too. So at least we'll put the metal saucer to some use. Well, which sucks, right? Because we're kind of compensating for my opponent's um, good luck. There's a tail slip. A pass here would be fantastic, but we're not that lucky. <laughs> We are definitely not that lucky. Three hammers out of the way though, that's good news. Uh, this should have metal goggles though, and therefore it couldn't be targeted. That was a big oversight on my part. It's big, big oversight. Uh, because even I would be preventing this damage too. But oh well. Oh well, geez. Okay, now I am gonna like lose a scoop of it anyways to research so I can metal saucer freely here. Hopefully he put some damage here. He does not. He in fact does not. So let's do this. And then let's go. Okay, well <laughs> let's go ahead and attach. Let's I'm gonna go ahead and save the metal energy. And I do find a quick wall, which is definitely not what I want to see. I actually think I'd rather save the quick wall, right? I will bench this guy. I mean, yeah, I'm gonna save the quick wall. So I'll get the metal energy back. Pretty funny. And then I'll go ahead and do this and then I'll go ahead and research. Obviously, we're not getting a KO. Um, nowhere near close to the comb. Well, no, actually, we have Sonya. Never mind. So what we're missing is a switching card. Ooh. Okay. All right. If I pull up the combo right now, should I? Because I could get Marnied, right? I could just get Marnied. So I might as well to the combo now. Oh, I'm not happy about it though. I mean, is there anything differently I could do here? I don't think there is.
I'm drawing very subpar. I'm generally drawing very subpar. No follow-up support draw. No, no nothing really. No switching card, right? Even one switching card would have been enough to put us in a good spot. But oh well. Oh well. I mean, and to top that off. Um, to top that off, my... My Deden is priced, right? So, my Deden wasn't priced, would be in a pretty okay spot, but because it is priced, that's just super annoying and super sad. But oh well. Okay. So there's a Dragon Bolt. Hmm. I'm gonna need a fantastic top deck or a fantastic top card. I guess I have top two cards possibly. Okay, well, I mean, I guess I'll take that. <sighs> Never mind. Jeez, <sighs> like, how could my hand possibly get worse than what I had with an extra card, too? Jeez. <sighs> it's just insane. It's really, it's, it's insane. You know? Like, this doesn't even help me. This channel it just doesn't even help me that much. <sighs> okay, well, I mean... No, I can't, I can't even afford to attach. <laughs> and I get no switching card. Nice. Very, very nice deck. Very, very nice. Okay, so I'm clearly not pulling off the combo here. <laughs> oh boy. I mean, yes, this is pretty lucky. But given how unlucky I've been fighting so far... Um, anyways, uh, let's definitely go Tool Scrapper. And then let's just... See if I can get a switch off of this one card. Nope. I will have to retreat. I will have to attack. Giving my opponent the perfect amount of damage. Like, he hits me and then he puts the damage here and then I am basically out of energies. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, I guess, I mean, I have some. There's some. Uh, there's Seishin. Oh, it's just, I don't know. It's super frustrating to the way things are being sequenced, like I have 17 cards, 4 switches, not a single one drawn. What can you do? Okay, there's Mewtwo, there's Research. Obviously grabbing the Research. So I guess there's still a universe where my opponent doesn't find Energy, Switching Card, and the VMAX? Probably not though. Probably not. Probably, probably not. Probably not. It's nice to scoop up Meta Giratina to get extra damage counters, that makes sense. I feel like that's unnecessarily risky and or greedy. And it should have been to the Jirachi, because one extra damage counter is not going to change the outcome of this matchup, whereas not being able to attack could, you know? So definitely big disagree with that play my opponent just did. Definitely big disagree. I am down four Metal Saucers, so... I mean, it would be fantastic if you whiffed. It would actually be fantastic. I don't know whether the slowness of the turn is any indication. I really don't know. If we just see a pass here, that would be insanely good. We do have to be careful about this guy, though. Do have to be careful about the Nihiligo. 
Because Nihilio could just knock out my station. And I'm down to mine, so there's there's like Oh Decides to sacrifice the Nihiligo, like I definitely don't agree with that. I most certainly do not agree with that play, nor do I understand it. Okay. So I can attack this turn again. But does it serve any actual purpose though? Does it actually serve any purpose whatsoever? My bet is at 5 price. I don't think it does, honestly. I do not think it does. I don't think attacking matters right here. I believe what I should do is put an energy here for sure. Right? Blossom Sorters is very nice. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch into a Seijin. Yeah, I'm gonna switch into this Seijin. Let that guy go down. Why even switch? Hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna switch into the station. I'm gonna attach goggles. And I'm gonna intrepid sword. I do have a switch left. Half my boss disorders. It's the last one though. Best case scenario, he comes up and attacks me. That's the best case scenario. That is definitely the best case scenario. Interesting game for sure though. Just got a lot closer. Because of that whiff. Okay, he has his boss disorder. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, but he passes though. All right. Wait. So why? What? He can't take five prizes in one turn, right? He absolutely can't. The question is, do I go boss disorders on this guy? And I don't think I do. I feel like I just attack here? Shrine doesn't matter. <sighs> because okay, let's let's hang on this. He comes up, attaches energy, attacks me, KOs this guy, right? But there's no humanly possible way for him to KO this guy and this guy at the same time. So then I go switch, attack, right, with this guy. I am only down one switch. Yeah. Okay, I think I got this. I think I got this. And I put the boss's orders at the top to make sure. Wow, I had three energy prizes. Or two. I think three. Um, yeah, I guess without the energy, the, the scoop up net play wasn't super greedy, but still, I highly disagree with it. He's gonna need back to back boss disorders basically to beat me, and he could easily do that actually. Only one scoop up net down. Jeez. Oh, only two actually. Two to two. Still. Uh, maybe I should have boss disorders. Yeah, actually, I probably should have boss disorders. Yeah, I should have boss disorders. Because I get the first hit in, and then if you choose to retreat and try to deck me out or something, then I have enough switching cards to just attack, 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 and win. So, yeah, that not playing the boss orders might have. might come back to bite me. Scoop up maps on the Mewtwo. Okay, it's for research. That's perfect. That's perfect. 
Well, it's not perfect, but it's it's fine. Obviously, grabs the research. Does reset stab me? So that could be problematic. That actually could be problematic. Goes for the research. Finds the energy. Yeah, I should have bossed the orders when I could. I mean, I'm down to 10 cards, but still, I really should have done that. I really, really should have done that. I do have three switches left. He's down the one boss disorder this deck plays. He's down three scoop up nets. Oh, wow, he passes again. What? Okay, then that's definitely game now. I'm fairly sure that's gonna be game. I'm gonna go research. Yeah, that should 100% be game. I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna get a KO. Right? I just need to protect myself against a possible Marnie. I have two cards left. I can play the Stadium. I'm fairly sure. I have switch left. And then I just go... In case I get more need, I'll put the boss's order at the top. And then I'll just go Brave Blade. And I'm down to one price, and that should be it. Because I just go boss's orders on the Mewtwo or the Mew. He only has one scoop of net left, so he cannot. There's the silly Tatene. He cannot KO me. Um, right, he, he cannot trap me, I have Switch. He cannot pick up both. I have boss disorders and he only has one scoop up net left. So yeah, that scoop up net on the Giratina. I mean, I'm not sure if it cost him or not. He got a switch. So he still could have switched back because he didn't find the energy, but still, I don't know. It felt super, super greedy. And decides to promote the Mew. I. I don't understand. I don't understand this Mew promotion. And there we go. Alright. I, I don't understand. Like, it felt like my opponent was... I feel like my opponent was trying not to lose rather than trying to win, if you know what I mean. Um, we were definitely the last people to finish, so we're gonna go ahead and guarantee ourselves at least five points. Guarantee ourselves at least five points so far, so maybe I should have a tournament rep thingy counter instead of CP. <laughs> Now we have tournament wrap. I don't know. I don't even know what number to aim for. Um, I know there's like a big delay in checking the leaderboards and whatnot. So we'll see. Um, sure, I'll bet you. And Washington sleeves. Pigarum, okay. We're up against Pigarum. There's no other lightning viable deck. I mean, there's Toxtricity, but it's not super, super viable. It's not super, super viable. Big shout out to our sponsors TCG Player, Poton Store, Mealy Buds Gaming, and Ultimate Guard. Really appreciate the support, of course, for the channel. It's always incredible to receive the support from fantastic companies. Makes my day-to-day -day much, much easier, and I really appreciate them for that. All right, so there's the Coco being used for a single energy. What? I don't understand why my opponent just did that, but we'll take it. We'll accept it. All right, so Shine is there. Might be important. I do feel like conserving the scoop up net is gonna be good. 
So it's going on Primate Wisdom. That, uh, not happy about that, but uh, well, now there's three energies gone. And, all right, so this finds me Jirachi Prism Star. Right, too bad my Mr. Mime is priced. <laughs> too bad my Mr. Mime is priced. So no combo for Ross. Right, no combo anywhere near soon for us. And fairly sure it's just Intrepid Sword here. No energy either. No metal saucers either. Ugh. But oh well. Mr. Mime is not available today. No combo last game, no combo this game. There's the stadium for my opponent. There's an Electro Power being played. There's a Marty. Okay, actually, I don't mind that Marty at all because my hand was atrocious. Not atrocious, but you know what I mean. There's the energy. There's the Stella Wish. Trying to get that switching card, I imagine. And then. I don't think I'm gonna Marty here. Uh, quick Ball, probably for the 10 if there's no switching card for my opponent. Um, wow, third energy switch. Oh no, second, second. Um, I might just Deadly Change here, although it is risky because of the Attack Vault possibility. It is risky because of the Attack Vault possibility. I'm also not very hopeful of finding my Stadium, which sucks. Fully expect my opponent to find a Switching card here, I'd be very surprised if he doesn't. Yeah. <sighs> Things are looking rough though, things are looking very rough. Lost a lot of energy early on. A lot of energy early on. There's a retreat. There's the full blitz. I believe I have to be careful. I can't afford to bench the Denny. Okay, it decides to borrow the Choo Choo instead of the Pidon. Alright. Uh, okay. So we can't get an attack off, right? That's good news. And then we can go ahead and do this, and then we can go ahead and Marty. <laughs> okay, so dead hand, right? Dead hand after the Marty. Not anymore, thank you so much. So let's do that, let's do this. And why not? Let's do this in case of a Marty. Let's go ahead and break blade. So, in a perfect world, right? The stadium sticks. In a perfect world, if my opponent doesn't counter the stadium, that was a very lucky draw for us. That peak row goes down in between turns, and then all we need to worry about is knocking out another tag team. Probably that peak run. Though the shrine is just gonna be wonderful. You know? And if it doesn't have any bench space for the Marshadow, we don't even know if they play Marshadow. We don't know if they play a second stadium. Could be Swell, could be Viridian Forest. But usually, lately, peak runs are only playing one stadium and Marshadow. So, with no bench space. With absolutely zero bench space, we are in a pretty good spot. All right. Oh, look, my opponent, the previous opponent, just messaged me that he got disconnected. That's unfortunate. I'm sorry, Lucas. Okay, there's a Marty. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Because we put the research at the top, right? We were good. We were good Pokemon players, and we put the research at the top. Now we just need a switch. Tool Scrapper, that's fine. So far, a single Electro Bar has been played. And my opponent doesn't even get to attack. Oh my god. What? That's just insane. And now I don't even need to attack to get the KO. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good about my chances, and no combo needed, right? Absolutely no combo needed. I do play a great catcher. That would just end the game immediately. So I say 
Why not, right? Like, why wouldn't I go for the Great Catcher in this instance? I will save the boss's orders, right? I don't want to discard that, because that might be the game-winning uh, card. However, I'm certainly going to try and find that Great Catcher. Not there, not here, right? So I'm going to go ahead and grab a Marnie. I can still wish again. I do play a great catcher, right? Yes, I do play a great catcher. Okay, I'm gonna try, right? Play to win. If I can just win the game right here, why wouldn't I want to win it right here? Okay, so not quite, right? Not quite. So I'm gonna let that Jirachi go down. And I'm just gonna Intrepid Sword. Finding that other boss disorders is bittersweet because um, because of uh, the fact that I could get party, right? But the shrine seems to be here to stay. And that Pigram already has enough damage to where I go boss of orders and I win. This guy is 20 damage off, but I'm feeling pretty good. We have two stations, so even if they go boss of orders, KO one of them, the other guy will finish off the game. If my opponent doesn't capture the stadium, then I don't even need a boss disorders or a great catcher to finish it off. So it's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good so far. Looking pretty, pretty nice. Very fitting Marnie uh, battle remix cover. <laughs> very, very fitting. Uh, great catcher, perfectly okay with that. Okay, the then it doesn't really change any of the situation. And my opponent simply passes. My opponent simply passes, decides it's not even worth KOing the, the Dene. Decides it's not even worth KOing the Dene. And we'll go ahead and Brave Blade, get the KO in between turns for at least seven, hopefully eight more tournament rep points. And let's go, we're starting immediately. Oh, my great catcher was prized, <laughs> so I was not going to find it. Along with the Mr. Mine, <laughs> but it's okay. I like this, sequential games, pretty cool. No need to stop. Um, it has taken me half an hour so far, so it is an important time investment. Um, to play in this in this player's cup to try and qualify um, I'm hoping I will need to invest all 30 all 300 of my tickets in order to get top 256 like Part of me says you should aim to be number one in Latin America, of course But another part of me says as long as you're 256 then you should be fine uh, my opponent says I have a good deck. I don't know what he's playing, but I'm gonna tell him he has a good deck as well. Probably the mirror match, <laughs> based on that, I guess. So not great that we might lose the two uh, Metal Saucers. Though I can put them both back with the two Orangus, actually. So that's good news. That is very good news. And we just see a straight up research. Uh, Feeny's gone. Ordinary Rod is gone, so not quite the exact mirror match, right? There's Jirachi, there's a Metal, probably a Metal Saucer getting attached. Or getting played. There we go. That is scary though. What might happen though is if my opponent doesn't have Metal Goggles, and I do, which, he, what, like, what might be happening is he's playing the second place list by Azul. And I'm playing the first place list, which has the metal goggles. And neither list has ordinary rods, so it's definitely not that. Right? And I, I like including ordinary rod in decks that don't need it, it's just it's a it's a move where one game you felt like you needed something and you had already discarded, and so you say, oh, if I had an ordinary rod, I could recover it, right? But you're never gonna have the ordinary rod at the right time when you specifically need it, so oh well. 
Uh, that card doesn't matter here. Okay. Is mine... Oh, I already messed up. <laughs> I already messed this up. Okay, so I'm gonna go... This. <laughs> so I'm gonna lose researches in the mirror match. <laughs> And metal saucers in the mirror match. <sighs> I can't believe it. <laughs> I actually can't believe it, but oh well. <laughs> what is this? What even is this? Okay. Well, I mean, that's something, I guess. I only attach one, of course. I can't be KO'd unless a tool scrapper gets played. I cannot be KO'd. My opponent attacks me, then I pull off the combo and that's cool. Having this plus Sonia is nice, right? Though so I expect to get Marty at some point. And then the Mel's others will be at the bottom of the deck, but oh well. It's okay. So far so good, I guess. Quick ball. If they don't have metal goggles and we do, we have a very distinct advantage to where we won kill and they took a kill. It's as simple as that, right? At least with this first station. And all we need to do is pull off the combo twice in order to win, right? That's all I need to do. That is all I need to do. That is all I need to do. Quick ball. This guy Mewtwo goes for mine. That should be the Jirachi, right? Just finds it. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, <laughs> why do you play that? And why do you play that? And why do you play that? What? <laughs> And Mewtwo. Okay, so we're dead. Like, there's no way I win now. He has metal goggles and I don't. It's as simple as that. <sighs> and he gave the first Queen Station to which I've dedicated three attachments. So, I'm not gonna bother. I can't win the mirror match when that happens. Like, I absolutely can't. The opponent had the perfect hand, the perfect response to my mediocre start, my huge loss of resources and the disadvantage of losing the tool scrapper and I don't know how he fit everything. But, oh well, seven points, seven points, not bad to add to our tally. We have 37 out of a possible 48 points, right? 37 out of a possible 48 points. It does hurt to lose that way, but we'll live. Um, it's all about the grind. It's all about quantity over quality in this player's cup. So, like I said, we only need to be top 256. We only need to be 256. We don't need to be first place. So, the grind is real. I'll keep grinding. And I'll catch you in our next Players' Cup video. Bye-bye.